Hey guys, Richard Holden here for Comp Cams. Today we're going to take a look at valve flow. And to start off, I've got a magic trick for you. Take a look at this. I'm going to make this valve float. Rise, 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 I command you. Okay, as it turns out, I really don't have magical powers. But that doesn't mean that valve float, valve bounce, and other forms of valve train instability don't exist. So let's grab our valve, head over the dyno as we get back to basics. When you take a look at the math involved with an internal combustion engine, it's amazing that they even work. At an idle speed of 600 RPM, the valve is opening and closing five times per second. So the valve has to operate five times every second. Every time the cam goes around, it has to activate the lifter, that has to activate the push rod, that has to activate the rocker arm, and that has to open and close the valve five times a second. And that's just at idle. If we raise the engine speed to say 6,000 RPM, where most performance engines might run, that's 50 times a second. It's amazing they even run. To better understand valve float, it's very important that we understand which components are involved. We need to take a look at the camshaft, the lifter, the push rod, and the rocker arm. GM spent a lot of time and money to ensure that the spring rate and frequency of their valve spring was optimized for the rest of the valve train components. Anytime you change any one of those components, you throw that delicate balance off. Those changes might include a high performance camshaft with more lift and duration, adding boost from a turbo or supercharger, or in our case, adding something as simple as an aftermarket roller rocker. To illustrate the gains offered by a roller rocker upgrade, we installed this LS on the dyno. We're gonna perform that upgrade, but first, we'll run the motor stock with the stock springs and the stock rockers. Then, we're going to upgrade to a set of Comp 1.72 aluminum roller rockers. Then, after we experience the valve flow, we're gonna show you how to cure that with a valve spring upgrade. Now that we've run our test motor with the factory rockers and factory valve springs, it's time to upgrade to roller rockers. We've got these 1.72 ratio comp gold rockers that do two things. One, they add a little bit of ratio, they're 1.72 versus 1.7 for the factory rockers. They also offer a roller tip, which will decrease friction. Let's jump in, swap the rocker. We just finished the rocker upgrade on our LS. Did we increase the power? You bet. Was it a total success? Eh, maybe not so much. As we expected, the increased valve train mass of the roller rocker upgrade caused an early valve float issue, but we've got a cure. 26 918 springs from Comp Cams. We're gonna install these babies using this custom LS valve spring tool. Let's jump right in, get those springs installed. We finished our day of dyno testing. We've upgraded the rockers and the valve springs. So let's take a look at the results. We can see on the dyno curve here, 
In stock trim with the stock rockers and stock springs, we were about 339 horsepower. After adding the rockers, that jumped up to 353. But if you take a look, ooh, right here, valve float. That's what valve float looks like on a dyno curve. After we upgraded the valve springs, big power, and look, we were able to rev this thing all the way to 7,000 RPM. When it comes to LS motors, the weak link has to be the factory valve springs. So if you're considering boost, a camshaft, or even just roller rockers, know this. Whether you choose Beehive or dual spring, a valve spring upgrade from comp cams is your first step in getting back to basics.